Hello, welcome back. This is Zestology, the podcast all about energy, vitality and motivation. I'm Tony Wrighton and today looking at the surprising power of music with a man who's a friend of the show. He's been on it, oh, I think it's four or five times now. Dr. Stephen Simpson, elite performance coach, medical doctor and someone who has a bit of a musical pedigree as you'll find out. So today we look at music, we look at the morning technique that Steve dips in and out of Um, that really helps him to relax and kind of set up his day and how music ties in with all of that. You'll also hear the story of how Steve, frustrated by the fact he couldn't find any music which quite did what he wanted it to do, wrote his own piece of music with a specific beat, which I thought was quite cool. It's another podcast that I recorded a few months ago and I'm so pleased that we did because I love music myself. I've got a musical summer, been to a few... Um, festivals and also been to Ibiza twice which makes me sound a lot cooler than I am (laughs) Um, but uh, but music obviously played a big role in those trips to Ibiza as well and I wanted to look at the role that music can play in kind of motivation and vitality and that's why we're featuring it today on Zestology we are recording Steve how are you I'm well, Tony. Thank you very much for agreeing to do this, as always. My pleasure. It's it's, it's uh, the fourth one we've done, isn't it? You know, I don't keep count. (laughs) (laughs) But, Um, uh, yeah, it is. And and you look very well yourself. In fact, you've just told me. Yeah, uh, five kilos, I've got. Yeah, five kilos. Yeah. Mm. Let's talk about music, Steve. Ah. (laughs) (laughs) You listen to... You do heart rate variability training every morning, don't you? I do. Could you explain to people what that is? And then we'll explain how that ties in with music because I know that we've briefly mentioned this in a podcast before, but it's fascinating. And for you, it's had a massive impact on your life as well, hasn't it? It has, yes. Well, I'll keep the science to an absolute minimum. Heart rate variability, it, it is what it says. I mean, if let's take an example. If your heartbeat was 60 beats per minute, I mean, the normal for a a man is 72 but, yeah. but the maths is a bit easier if it's 60 beats a minute then you would think okay that means that every second my heart beat once but it doesn't because sometimes it'll be less than a second and sometimes it'll be a bit more of a second mm. but over the whole minute it'll be 60 so 60 is the average and the more that it the the variability the more that it fluctuates the better it's supposed to be because it in it in it entrains um, your heart and your brain and your breathing and uh, gets everything you know working together in sync you'd think it'd be less you'd think it'd be the, the more that there's variability that'd yeah. be worse but it's better it, it's it's better and you would think that now there's a big proviso here there are um, heart diseases and arrhythmias that you can get where you can get an enormous amount of heart rate variability, but that is pathological. That is yeah. different. Yeah, that is not, not a sign of too much. About no, no, it. Hopefully no. that's all right. But in yeah. general, and I believe the reason is because if you're the caveman and you're about to get attacked by the lion, yeah. your heart needs to be used to a massive amount of variability to be able to cope in that situation so it doesn't give you a heart attack. That's a very good example. It is. It's, it's as if the heart is primed. Um, I, I was, funnily enough, I, th- I, th- I think I'm um, involved in making a TV program about this, and so right. I was brushing up some research and, and reading the papers last week, and they likened it to a, a tennis player when he's in this stance, you know, waiting to receive yeah. serve. He's constantly moving his or her body and primed for rapid action. So the example you gave is absolutely mm. perfect. That's what it is. So, so then there's this software isn't there, that you can use every morning Mm -hmm. to enhance your heart's variability capabilities? Well, it's like all of these things. When you practice stuff, it starts to work Mm. without you thinking about it. And there are no particular... There are instructions of, you know, various breathing techniques that you can use, but generally... You just do it every day and you just learn subliminally or unconsciously mm. what seems to work best. So what happens? You wake up in the morning, 6am. Yeah, six, six every day so far. 6am? <laughs> Five usually. Five usually. Okay, and then and what time do you... And then what, 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 how does the morning go? What do you do? Well, I, I try. I, it's, you know, five o'clock. People don't like it if you get up at that time. 
uh, well, not in London anyway. Um, so I, I usually just lay in bed and listen to the you know listen to the radio for a little bit, and right. then I might get up at six o'clock, have a shower, and then um, then the first thing I will do is is my yeah. my hot math. Session. And it's kind of like a meditation, and yeah, and it involves. Is it one of those ear clips? It is a it is an ear clip. Yeah. Um, but again, there are different models. I think where there's a clip that goes over your um, finger. Uh, and they, in fact, it's a it's a it's a bit like one uh, one of the um, things that they use in hospitals, the monitors. Right. You know, it measures your heartbeat. Yeah. And but stuff. you've got the ear clip. I think I've got the ear clip yeah. as well. Yeah. yeah. And so you sit down, mm-hmm. and it starts measuring your your heart rate from your pulse in your ear. It does, <clears throat> and uh, and of course, working out your heart rate variability. And it gives you certain cues. I mean, it's all programmable. If, if you don't like these noises, you can program them out. But there are different noises that it will, little pinging noises, and it will tell you when you're in a, uh, in a state of high coherence or, and, you know, good heart rate variability. Yeah. And likewise, you'll get a, vo- a noise when you're not. And so you learn the kind of breathing to do and the, and the state of mind to get into mm. to hit lots of green lights. Yeah. And this is where the first kind of example of music comes in, because sometimes, in fact, most of the time you do this with music, don't you, when you're doing your heart rate variability training or or your meditation or whatever you like to call it in the morning? I do. Yeah, I do. Shall shall I tell you what kind of music I use? Yes. As as an example, I mean, I I wouldn't recommend heavy metal music (laughs) (laughs) because basically you're trying to chill. But some people might chill to heavy metal music. They could do. They could do, I guess. You could, put, you could bet together a real chill heavy metal playlist. Yeah, you could. Oh, talking about that, I heard a fantastic um, heavy metal band. They were playing Bridge Over Troubled Water. They're called something like, um, uh, I'm going to get the name wrong, but it's something like Tormented or Warped or something like that. <laughs> and, um, but they're on Spotify and they've had a huge amount of hits. Now, can you imagine this ballad, Bridge Over Troubled Water, Simon Garfunkel, <laughs> being... But this guy hits these notes that go right through you. It really? makes your hair stand yeah. on end. So, that, but that wouldn't necessarily be the playlist that you want to listen no, to. No, no. Um, for your heart rate variability. No, it wouldn't. So, you, so what you you're just saying you were going to tell us what music you listen to for well, that? It, you could, you know, any kind of chill music is going to be good, pretty good. But I'll give you my two pers- the personal recommendations. Yeah. There's a piece piece of music called um, Spiegel im Spiegel, which is by a composer called Avo Part, and um, and that just seems to have the right rhythm. And I and I listened listen to that. And there's another piece of music, um, and. I'm giving this is a piece of music that I co-composed so this is a plug but it's not a commercial plug because um, I think it's on Spotify and it's free to listen to Uh, and it's called Soul of the Shaman and the background of this music is that the beat is exactly 60 beats per minute and you wouldn't notice this unless I've told you but underneath the whole music and you can only hear it when the music is quiet you will hear a heartbeat beating at 60 beats per minute. Now, my theory, and it's only a theory, could be absolute, uh, you know, uh, rubbish. But I think if a baby is in the womb, that's the kind of noise that they would hear. And when their mother would be sleeping, probably the pulse rate would be about 60. But whatever, this has had, you know, thousands and thousands of downloads. So and I remember people, when you wrote Soul of the Shame. Yeah. So how did, you, how did that come about? It, well, it came about because it was just when I started doing audio books and remember we did mm. used to do audio books to, well yeah. still do yeah and um i i like to have some you know gentle backing music um with with the voice on top and i tried to get permission to use other bits of music and you get into all kinds of copyright and legal things and um the engineer where i recorded my audio books he said well you know why don't we write a bit of music ourselves? And I said the usual thing, uh, excuse me, I'm not musical. And he says, <laughs> well, you know, if you say that, you won't be. He said, but I'm here to help you. And this the way we construct music is we just work on, you know, two or three notes at a time and we build something that we like by trial and error. And that's what we did. Soul of the Shaman. Mm. So now you use that music yourself. I use yeah, I do. 
I mean, it's you know, it, it's terrible listening to your own music, but the fact is, is that I really like it, and I and I don't think of me; I think of the engineer. Really, I mean, mm. I get you know, I give. Well, I don't think it's terrible at all listening to your own music. You you, well, it's you just ego, said ego, egoistic, isn't it? Yeah, but you know, I mean, you just said that you you created the music because it you felt you sorted out a problem True. that you couldn't solve with other people's music. Yeah. So yeah, well, that's the truth, Tony, and it's also a nice reframe. Yeah. Thank you for that. Yeah, yeah. That's so, true. so the beat in the music. Remind me again. The beat in the music is mm. exactly sixty beats per minute. Okay, and you think that would be that would replicate the sound of the beating heart that you'd hear in the womb? I mean, that's a bit of a stretch, Steve, isn't it, or not? It might be a bit of a stretch. Who knows? But uh, all I know is that it's a relaxing beat. And mm. in fact, as you were talking just now, I don't have a stopwatch in my hand, but it seemed to me that you were speaking at about 60 beats per minute. Okay, so the, the, so the kind of the melody of the rhythm of my voice was mm. at a certain pace. Yeah. yeah. And I know that you know a little bit about hypnosis and stuff like that. Yeah. And the cadence of, your, of a voice is very important in mm. hypnosis, or can be. So you put Soul of the Shaman on, or the other one. Yeah. And then you listen to heart rate variability. You do the heart rate variability. Yeah. And the music, well, music does do that, doesn't it? It does help you. I mean, you know, talk about hypnosis just there. Yeah. It does help get you into a different state. And that's the definition of a trance, isn't it? Any altered state is a trance. Correct. Correct. A lot of people think if you're in trance, you've got to be walking around like a a zombie, you know, from the lost dead. Mm. It's not like that at all. We all go in and out of light trance every single day. Uh, you know, we don't have to call it hypnosis. Mm. And, uh, but it's a very nice place to be. Some people call it daydreaming. I think Einstein used to call it that. And he said that's when he has his best ideas. And, and when you're listening to music, mm. <laughs> especially if you're kind of walking down the street, often I go into a bit of it. Or listening to podcasts, yeah. music or podcasts, I tend to go in a bit of, bit of a daydream as well. Yeah, I bet Especially you do. it's really good. Yeah. Yeah, well, you lose yourself, don't you? Mm. I mean, music is one of the gateways to a flow experience, to being in the zone. Mm. And it's no surprise. I mean, uh, some of my work is with um, uh, elite athletes and sports people. Mm. And I think just about all of them um, uh, use music, uh, especially just before an event, you know, mental preparation. And they choose it themselves. You, you know, you can't choose music for another person. It's a, very, yeah. it's a very personal thing. So get a Spotify playlist together of music that somehow inspires you yeah. or reminds you. I mean, this is this would be a classic NLP technique, wouldn't it? Yeah. To um, use music that reminds you of when you did whatever you do best. Yeah. And then layer on even more good feelings of it by listening to it a couple of times and closely associating seeing and hearing and feeling exactly how you felt at that point when it was going great yeah that's exactly right yeah I mean, that's a wonderful technique to use and and you know spotify is so good that uh, once they know you like you know one type of music they start suggest suggesting playlists for you and, they do you know, discover and, weekly which is yeah, great every is. once in a while I worry that Discover Weekly thinks I haven't got a very good taste in music. <laughs> but really mo- most of the time I love it. <laughs> but then every once in a while, I think my mate was saying, uh, he's got three kids and, and he runs a record label just down the road. And he was saying, uh, yeah, they keep giving me like Teletubbies music and <laughs> because his kids are listening to kids music. So that ruins your Discover Weekly. But I love it. And that's how I learn new music. Are you prepared to share with our listeners some of the suggestions they've made or... Well, I mean, it just gets a bit cheesy at times, you know, but uh, I think Justin Timberlake might have popped in there at one point. I, was, I don't know how that popped in there. Well, but, he's, um, he's good, isn't he? Yeah, but, yeah. you know, not, not really my, my normal choice no. of music, but in general. And it also, I mean, it's, it is brilliant anyway, and you, you're right, you know, mm. it learns the type of music that you listen to. Yeah. Um, in terms of trances, then, um, would you use that with, uh, you know, you were talking about working with athletes. Mm. Um, would you have you ever actually sat down and created playlists with them, or, or talked about how they use music, or is it just something that they tend to do? Um, I've talked about it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I always talk talk and of, often when we will have sessions together, if mm. I'm wanting to shift their altered state into a state where you know we can get maximum learning the fastest. Yeah, um, I will play some music such as we've discussed. Mm. Mm. 
So okay, back to your back to your breakfast then. Yeah, so you, okay. so, so yeah. it's seven a.m. now, and you've put the you've put the clip on your ear, yeah. and you've played a couple of tracks. How long would you do it for? Well, um, it, I, I actually choose eight minutes. Eight minutes. Uh, and the reason why I settled on that was that uh, Spiegel im Spiegel, uh, it, the, the the part the, the part that uh, I, I listened to mm. lasts, lasts for four minutes. So I listened to that twice, which right, is eight okay. minutes. Yeah. And fortunately, Soul of the Shaman, it comes to a nice little upbeat melody um, mm. towards six or seven minutes I think okay. so it seems yeah. to work yeah and then um, I think it's important to say people listening to this who, who think that sounds like a lovely way to start the day but I haven't got a, a, a HRV thing to clip to my ear you could do it just as well without the, the ear clip that's yeah. just the secondary bit isn't it really if you're going to do a bit of meditation at some point yeah then just do it and then just, just do, do it, it. With, with listen to soul of the shaman yeah or spiegel or spiegel did i, yeah. did I pronounce yeah. it right yeah Spiegeling, it means in german apparently mirror mirror in the mirror because it's a very reflective sound the okay. sounds reflect yeah. each other. yeah so just sitting down listening to a bit of music in the morning would have a big impact it would it would and um you see the music will help to drive the meditation because in in nature there is this thing called resonance and sooner or later the resonance will win if if a, a bunch of people, I I, 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 I notice this on the Millennium Bridge here because mm. it's make clump 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 as you all walk. Yeah, along this there. is the bridge that was called the Wobbly Bridge because the wobbly, it slightly yeah. vibrates when you walk it, on it. It does. Yeah, it does slightly vibrate, and you you notice that people will start falling into step, and so they'll all be bloom bloom wow. bloom bloom. Yeah, and um, is go, that resonance? That's resonant. Well, it's yes, it is. It is because they are fitting into the same pattern. Mm. And it's just like when people dance. Obviously, they dance to the beat of the music. And here's, here's a story that goes back, uh, back years. When soldiers are marching left, right, left, right, they come to a bridge, you are a bull lot, break step. And what that means is, is that they stop marching and they start, they walk normally because they don't want them to resonate the bridge because in the old wooden bridges, they would resonate and they could get a wobble on and maybe right. even fall into the river. Yes, yeah. So be careful. Yeah. So, so the resonance, why is resonance a good thing normally? I mean, why is it potentially good that everyone potentially, or is it, is it good that people potentially fall into step on the Millennium Bridge? Um, well, I think it's good because people want to do that. And n now, if if there was a very high frequency resonance, it could be quite stressful. Mm. And, and and probably people have exploited that in interrogation techniques and stuff. I mean, I haven't, I haven't got a clue. But when you start talking about frequencies, that's interesting, because just before we started um, recording, mm -hmm. we were talking about the link between music and the, fre the different frequencies in which the brain waves operate, weren't we? We were, Yeah. Do you well, want to just kind of remind me of what you were telling me then. Uh, I'll try. I mean, first I better say I'm not an I'm not a neuroscientist, so this is a very coarse. Yeah, but you're a doctor, so we I, trust you, Doctor. I know, and you all think doctors know everything. I'm sure you think, <laughs> <laughs> and you'll be you know wrong most to... things. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. Well, from from you know studies that have been a long going around a long time now, we can we can wire the brain, you know, externally stick electrodes on our heads, yeah. and and we know that there's four basic types of brain waves and they're called alpha beta theta and delta mm. um and i know you know a bit about this because now i always get a bit confused between alpha and beta yeah, which beta is the, the high frequency one yeah alpha is kind of like so beta is when you're kind of when you're driving or you're concentrating on something or you're kind of uh, all over excited and it can it can be a, a very positive state if you need to be in a high alert state but also you can feel quite overstimulated in beta and alpha is much more chill right <clears throat> yeah. that's it that's it so those are the ones, those are the normal ones. That, and then uh, theta's kind of light sleep or just kind of super drowsy. Correct. And then delta's deep sleep. Yeah. Yeah. And these theta and the delta ones, they're the ones that we want when we are meditating, when we're chilling. These yeah. are the ways that people... And the low alpha state as well. And low yeah. alpha. Yeah. yeah. And low alpha. Yeah. And um, these are the states that people go into when they're meditating, um, when they're in light trance hypnosis mm. and also when they're in REM sleep which is rapid eye movement sleep and and the the scientists I think they say that when people go into REM this is really when the brain is processing a mm. lot of information mm. unconsciously yeah music can help us 
to get in those different states. But also there's a link between the, the frequencies that our brains are emitting and the and frequencies of music, I guess. So when you were saying don't listen to heavy metal, yeah, there's a good reason why you said that. Mm. And that is because it's quite a kind of excitatory yeah. vibe yeah. when you listen to I it. Said, I said, I didn't mean it, it, don't listen to it because it's no good. I mean... I actually yeah, don't like listen it. to it if you want to do heart rate variability exactly. meditation it's at 7 o'clock in the morning. Right, that's it. So um, it's quite interesting because I often hear people say the same thing with TV. Mm-hmm. You know, oh, don't um, watch... Well, actually, people say it often with internet as well. Don't watch kind of super hardcore kind of car chases or murder scenes on TV or even, like, look at Facebook and stuff in the half hour before you go to sleep. I wonder what you're going to say then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because your brain is, like, super overstimulated just at the point when you're trying to chill out. Yeah. So there's a time and a place for different levels of stimulation. Certainly is, yeah. And, you know, you don't don't want to be watching... The way the news of the world is at the moment, you don't want to be watching news late at night just before you go to bed. And I have mentioned this on a podcast already, but I'll tell you again. Uh, The night of the US election... Mm Mm-hmm. Did you stay up late and watch it? No. No, I did. Did you? And I slept so badly. Yeah. Because, and I'm not going to go into the ins and outs of the result, it was just, I was so overstimulated by mm-hmm. having watched this kind of reality show soap opera play out over a period of months and then a very dramatic night. And it's about half through our time when I, you know, tried to go to sleep. Yeah. Firstly, I dreamt of Donald Trump, which... Did wasn't you? really on my radar. This is <laughs> very Freudian. Yeah, I know. It wasn't. It wasn't something that I was that, ha- that happy about. And oh. secondly, it was just a very light, disturbed sleep. Yeah. So yeah, that's um, perfect yeah. example. Um, a lot of people. Well, as you as you know, a lot of people have been very troubled psychologically by I these do. elections. And, yeah. And, and in, in in our country, the Brexit as well. And uh, yes, it's and whichever side you're on, exactly the stress of it. Yeah, yeah. I, I did. Um, is it the uncertainty? Do you think? It's, it's or a, is it fear of what might go wrong? Well, I, I did a video on this the week before the election, and I was talking about really about Brexit and how people in our country had been mm. upset by it and why they had been. Yeah, and. Actually, I was giving a pretty big hint that I expected Trump to win. And I knew, you know, as I, you know, if, if I can remember my words exactly, I said the problem with these things is that it fractures society. You've got almost half the people voting one way and almost half the other. And they're all voting for very good reasons because these voting decisions are not really made in the rational brain. Mm. We might like to think they are, that, you know, we're studying the, de- the debate and the facts and the analysis and the research and all the rest of it, but we're not. We're, we're just, these decisions are made deep in the brain, probably very close to the amygdala, which is our fear center. Mm. And it's definitely part of what we call the reptilian brain. So we're voting very much on emotion. Yeah. And um, we'd better, you know, this is a heads up because I see more shock results like this. Yeah, so you better get used to it. Better get used to it because, and uh, I, I think social media has got a lot to do with it, and that's not a bad thing. But so much of this, so much of our, we we make decisions so quickly now, mm. and so much of the Facebook, uh, not I mean all the social media sites. I, mean, I mentioned Facebook, it's but it's all the same. There are some very, very clever people who know how to trigger our emotions. Yeah. And it goes back to these um, these uh, fake news stories that are being posted. Mm. Now, I heard uh, somebody says, one of the managers of one of these companies, chief executive, saying, well, look, we've gone through it, and there's only 1% of all of the news posts that are the fake. Right. So, But, you know, when you've got a few billion posts every day, 1% of a few billion is still a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And... Uh, throughout history, we, there are very intelligent people who have who know that we are emotional creatures, and they mm. know how to appeal to our deeper emotions. Yeah. So, um, so we're living in a different world now. No, well, I've no, got a solution for that potentially. Have you for, for our emotions being manipulated? And again, okay. it comes back to music and what we talk about music because right. um, you and I obviously trained in NLP, and that's how we met. Mm-hmm. And one of the central kind of um, theories of NLP is that you can access certain emotions 
by stimuli around you. That might be something you see, something you feel, or something you hear. Yeah. And um, I was interested in talking about playlists, and because we're kind of looking at music today, how you could feel a certain way by listening to music, and also what we might call chaining anchors, putting a few songs in a row in a playlist, say, that would lead you from one place to another place. Because anchoring is the theory whereby you might listen to a song and it reminds you of being 17 and being on holiday and falling in love. It just happens all the time. Yeah. There's some tracks, it's a girl I dated when I lived in Australia, and I love, um, it's Ratatat. <laughs> I went to see him live in Australia. It was amazing, amazing gig. It's just such a brilliant memory. And it all went a bit south with the girl after that particular gig. Can't listen to it now. Yeah. Can't listen to Ratatat mm-hmm. because it reminds me of her. Yes. That's what we're talking about with anchoring. Yes. It's very powerful, isn't it? You it know, is. if you if you almost want to feel anything, you can do that with music. Is that something that you would recommend to people? I'd recommend what? Well, to do? using music to or using a, a, a stimuli like music to anchor a certain emotion. Definitely. Yeah. In fact, it's funny you should say that. Um, I, I go through a, a technique and I keep modifying it all the time. But one of the things that I work with any of my clients, doesn't matter what they've come to see me about, uh, I get them to, first of all, to think of a time when they were really brilliant at, at anything, actually. And I take them under, under light trance. I ask, I ask them to fill in all the details. Mm. You know, what you see, what did you see, what did you hear, what did you feel, all this kind of stuff. And then I'll, I, I will embellish it and I say, okay, now, um, if you could describe all of these feelings in one word, what would the word be? Yeah. And I give them a, then I say, and if this word had a colour, what would the colour be? Right. And then um, during this talk earlier this week, I added a little bit and I said, and um, now this word, uh, now this word, it, it, it has a colour. Now, if there was a music playing in the background, what would the music be? Right, yeah. And then when I bring them out of trance, we discuss what they've come up with. And then I say, now, look, we can take all of this experience that we've, you know, we've just encapsulated mm. and anchored over the last few minutes. Yeah. And we can use it in future situations yeah. when we want to feel that good again. Yeah, I'm really, I'm really motivated <laughs> to do that for myself. Yeah. How are you going to do it? Um, I think to anchor a kind of meditative state. So pick a track that I like, and it could be any track. Probably won't be Ratatat, but anything else will be fine. (laughs) And then, you know, just go over times when I've felt meditative in the past. And by the way, you know, I mean, if you're listening to this and thinking, hmm, I've never been very good at meditating, sometimes you can just imagine how you would look and sound and feel if you were meditating well. Even if you can't think of any time when it's ever happened well in the past, um, and I'm motivated to, yeah, maybe do something like that for myself because I haven't done it in a while and it'd be great. Mm. Yeah. Well, th- there are very few things that I would recommend to everybody, um, but meditation is definitely one of them. And you don't have to call it meditation if you don't like that word. But I think everybody would benefit from a little quiet time every yeah. single day when they can just, you know, slow everything yeah. down. Now, while we've been talking over the last few minutes, it's very interesting because there have been times when we've been speaking very slowly and then there's times when we've both got excited about stuff yeah. and we've been talking a lot more fast. So, you see, our, we're our mental very state. Very musical. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, we're changing our states, aren't we? Yeah, yeah. And, and pacing is a, a way of doing it. And we're, and we're not doing it deliberately. It's mm. just the way people communicate. Yeah. So we've got Soul of the Shaman. Mm. And what was the other one? Spiegel im Spiegel. Spiegel im Spiegel. <laughs> and if you wanted to chain anchors, and this is one of my favourite techniques, and I use this with someone who was scared of, um, back in the days when I was kind of doing more NLP stuff, mm-hmm. with someone who was scared of bridges. Mm-hmm. Really, very yeah. scared of bridges. Yeah, a lot of people, are, well, several people I know. Yeah, that. and she worked in Edinburgh, and uh, she would find it very she knew she had to drive across this big bridge to get to work Mm -hmm. and all morning she'd be dreading going to work Mm -hmm. and then from about lunchtime she'd be dreading driving home it's terrible so we we devised a four song playlist yeah very easy the first song was just a song that she quite liked nothing more than that okay was it bridge over troubled water (laughs) (laughs) it wasn't i don't think that would have been a very appropriate one and um 
the second one was one that left her feeling a little bit more uplifted Mm -hmm. and confident. Good. The third one, even more so, like an upbeat song that enhanced her mood, made Mm -hmm. her feel good and left her feeling confident. And the fourth was her all-time great song, which she associated with a superb memory of being relaxed, safe and confident. So she kind of, rather than just putting on that fourth song, it was too much. It, to, to expect her to get into that state straight yeah, away. You she took herself from one to four. She put it on 15 minutes before she got to the bridge. By the time she got to the bridge, she could drive over it relatively normally, and then she was over and she could put something else on. Yeah, that, that, that is so good. And, and you know, this is, I've never heard of this one before, but you're absolutely right. And, you, ever, you know, you can't go from A to Z without touching the other letters along the way. Mm. I, and when any kind of work that we do with clients, they always want to go to the last chapter of the book or they want to, you know, get immediate results. And obviously we want always want the person to walk out of the door um, yeah. better than they walked in. But there are, you know, there are some other steps that sometimes take a little time. That's good, good. Good tweetable, that one. You can't get to A to Z without all the letter, letters in between. Mm. And we're, we live in a very impatient age, don't we? Yeah. Mm. I'm definitely impatient. What's the time? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. It's almost time. For, almost one o'clock for us, isn't it? Mm. We're off to, to go to Bethnal Green and have a couple of glasses of wine. Um, <clears> as nice. always, I've loved talking to you. Um, everything else all right? In your life? I mean, because you're a bit of a regular on, on Zestology now, aren't you? So, I am. Yeah. I'm getting addicted to it. And I, I, <laughs> I, I you know, I, I love it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Good. Well, we and I love having you on as well. Thank you. Um, something I ask everyone on this podcast is what is one book you'd recommend and one tip for living with energy, vitality and motivation? As always, it can be any book and any tip. And you've given me plenty of books in the past. Is there anything that springs to mind as something that would be relevant for today um, and in terms of one tip for living with energy, vitality and motivation? Um, Well, I've been, as you said, I've been on four shows with you now and I've already given you four of my books. So I had Mm -hmm. to think about this one and I'm going back a few years. Um, But a book, probably one of my favourite books of all time is Catch-22 by Joseph Heller. Yeah. And there's, that is a book I'd, I've lost count of the number of times that I've reread that book. And every time I find something else between the lines. Can I just want to see, remind me, I think I've got it here somewhere. I don't know if I've read it. What, what, what is it again? It, it's, um, it's the story of um, an American Air Force unit operating out of Italy, uh, you know, bomber, bombers, I still yeah. think. And Catch-22 means that... Um, Basically, it, it's an ambiguous statement. If you do something, you're crazy. Yeah. And um, if you do, if you don't do it, you're crazy. Yeah. So uh, there's there's no oh, right, okay. there's, there's yeah. no there's yeah. no way of getting you can't use you can't use these excuses to get excused from these flying duties. Um, but we always uh, we seem to live in catch twenty two. It's when you're stuck between a rock and a hard place. Mm. But uh, I would recommend that. Okay, and, and then actually you've also recommended some music in this as well. What, remind me once again what it was called, that, that first track that uh, you like to listen to, which is four minutes long. Spiegel im Spiegel. It's quite well known by Evo Parrot. Okay, And Good. it's definitely guaranteed on Spotify. Is it? Yeah. Brilliant. And then what is one tip? One tip is bear in mind that when you have a thought, and according to you, because it's the name of your publishing company, we mm. have 70,000 thoughts a day. Yeah. I'm sure you counted them all, didn't you, to get to that number? Yeah, it was a pretty yeah. tiresome it, task. It would be. <laughs> it would be. Well, just remember that of all of these thoughts, they are basically all hallucinations. That's, the, that's why a person who voted for Clinton with one of their thoughts... Um, would have done that and the person next to them would have voted for Trump because they had different thoughts and they choose, chose which of those 70,000 they wanted to develop into an idea right. and then take action on it. Okay. Yeah. So just remember, folks, we are all in control of those thoughts. We mm. do have a degree of choice of which of those 70,000 thoughts we're going to pick yeah. and develop into an idea and may us yeah. choose wisely. Yeah. And in terms of meditation, 
mm. and mindfulness. Yeah. I mean, I think that's very relevant because I, I too tend to find that when I um, meditate and whether and that's whether I'm using music or not, I do tend to make better decisions. Exactly. Yes, you're absolutely right. And, um, and the reason, of course, is, is that you're connecting more to your subconscious or unconscious mind. And so this is the powerful bit of the brain. It's not the conscious mind, it's the unconscious. And this is the one time when things have slowed down a little bit and the truth can speak. Mm. Or, or these, these sort of instinctive, in, intuif, in, intuitive, yeah. good ideas yeah. on the surface. Yeah. In fact, intuition is probably the greatest gift a person can have. Yeah, Matt, I'm going to put a podcast, uh, sorry, a, a playlist together called Intuition. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, good stuff, Steve. Thank you so much. Not at all. T- thanks again, Tony, for inviting me on the show. And I'm so generous of you to offer to pay for the drinks for tonight. <laughs> <laughs> it, is, it is my shout off. You've agreed to do this. Yeah, I think oh, it probably cool. is. Um, Steve, thank you as always. And just remind people where... Um, they can find out more about you and what you do and the clients that you work with and everything else. Um, well, the best place is my website. Um, it's called drstevensimpson.com, so you might put that in the show notes, but if you can't remember that, um, uh, if you do getluckynow.me, getluckynow.me, that will take you to my website. And here is a commercial plug. That's the name of my new book that's out, and it's available, well, you can guess where. Everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry about that, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't worry about it. No, that's, that's, no, I'm, I'm, no. Deli- I'm delighted. And obviously yeah. I've read it and it's brilliant. So, yeah. yeah. You see, it's, it's about intuition. And when people can connect to their intuitive self, they start to get lucky. Mm. Or some people do anyway. Yeah. Um, maybe there's enough luck for all of us. There is. Yeah. It do- it, yeah, there is. There's, and you see, we don't use a lot of the luck that's around us because we don't see it. And please, please, I'd say, don't fall into the trap of thinking, oh, if I have a big slice of luck, that means there's some poor person on the other side of the world who's going to have less. Right. It doesn't work like that. Yeah. We live, fortunately, we live in an abundant universe, so we can be as greedy as we want to be. Yeah. Within reason. Well, it's funny you should say that, actually, because I was just talking to someone um, about a friend of mine who's also a podcasting rival, who's got slightly more listeners than I have. <laughs> really? And my first instinct when I found this out was to kind of say, oh, that's annoying. And mm-hmm. then I quickly thought, I thought, do you know what? That if the pie is bigger, the slice of the pie that I will get is bigger as well. You know, not only that, we I share loads of ideas with him on podcasting and how to get the word out there and everything else. Yeah. And I quickly reframed and rethought about how I had slightly less listeners than him could actually be a good thing because yeah. I could learn from how he's getting more listeners. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you could. I mean, again, that's another wonderful example of a reframe. Mm-hmm. And because we all have um, these negative emotions inside us, and I suppose you're a little bit envious of this other person, think, oh, God, you know, I'm working yeah. just as hard as him, maybe more. Um, but uh, you quickly killed that one. You, you exercised control over those, those 70,000 thoughts. Yeah, and, I probably and, did. Yeah. And, you, and you substituted it with positive emotions. And there's one good thing. There's, you know, good luck flows to good luck. Good mm. emotions flow to good emotions. People flow to good emotions. Yeah. And to people who are positive. Good stuff. Yeah. I won't be too jealous if I see his listening figures and they've gone up even more. No, don't. Tiny bit and, 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 and another thing, <laughs> another thing, and I, I can say this, believe me, you can't measure an audience by a number. It's the quality of the listener, and you have some wonderful listeners on your show. <laughs> Just leave it there, shall we? Enough said. <laughs> Thanks, Steve. That's it for this week's Zestology, and a bit it. You want to go and put a playlist together now and listen to some of your favourite tracks. Well, I hope you do anyway. If you like books as well as music, then you might want to join the Zestology Book Club. That's over on Facebook, and I'll see you next week.